You go to a swimming pool once a week, and today's the day, but everything suddenly goes wrong. As soon as you enter the swimming pool, you look at the TV in the hall. Breaking news! Someone spotted a zombie in town. They probably went downtown, and they may be anywhere. If you see one, call the police immediately. You think it's probably safer to stay in the swimming pool. Zombies are slow and probably aren't good at swimming. So you go to the shower to change, but as soon as you enter the shower room, you notice that something's off. Who's a zombie? The two girls seem completely fine, but there's a bandage on the man's leg. No one would go to a swimming pool if they had cuts or scratches, unless they're a zombie. Once upon a time, there was a wealthy king who hired an artist to paint his portrait. The artist told the king that he wanted to be paid in gold, and he wanted to get paid every day. He also said it would take him seven days to finish the painting. The wealthy king had only large bars of gold, and he wanted to give one bar for his work. But since the artist wanted to get paid daily, he needed to come up with a plan. He had a magic tool that could cut any material, but it was able to make only two cuts. How did the king split the gold bar so that the artist got his gold every single day in equal amounts? The king was really smart, so he cut the bars this way. One seventh, two sevenths, and four sevenths. The first day, he gave the artist one seventh of the gold bar. The second day, he gave him two sevenths, but took one seventh back as change. The third day, he gave one seventh back. The fourth day, he gave four sevenths, but took the other two pieces back as change. The fifth day, he gave one seventh, so the artist got five sevenths of the bar. The sixth day, he gave two sevenths, but took one seventh back again. And the very last day, the artist got one seventh, so in the end, he had a full bar of gold. Four friends, Josh, Maggie, Jason, and Rosie, were walking in the woods. It was a wonderful day, and they were about to start a picnic. But all of a sudden, the sun turned to black, and they saw dozens of zombies approaching them. The friends started running away, and saw a tunnel. It was dark and scary, but the guys knew exactly that when they crossed it, they'd be safe. They had only 12 minutes to cross the tunnel. It takes Josh one minute to cross it. Jason can do it in two minutes. Maggie thinks it will take her four minutes, and Rosie can cross it in five minutes. Not to risk it, the guys decided to split into two groups. The problem is that they only have one torchlight, and there's no way they go there in four. How can they escape? First, Josh and Jason should cross it with a torchlight while the girls are waiting on the other side. It takes two minutes, plus one minute for Josh to go back. They still have nine minutes. Josh hands the torchlight to the girls, and they cross the tunnel in five minutes. Four minutes left. When the girls are on the other side, they give the torchlight to Jason, who comes back to take Josh in two minutes, and they run back together in another two minutes. The airport security had an emergency alert. There's a man with fake documents trying to fly away from New York. They had three suspects who look almost the same. Which passport is fake? No matter what country a person is from, no passport can have a photo with mountains in the background. All backgrounds should be solid. John's passport has a suspicious photo in it. His documents are fake. Mason is a lifeguard. One day, a girl came up to him asking for help. She said someone had stolen her wallet, which she noticed when she was going to go and grab a soda pop. Mason checked the towel where the girl left her stuff, but the only thing he noticed were her own footprints. Is this girl lying to Mason? The girl was telling the truth. Mason had an eagle eye, and he saw a guy with a fishing rod. He must have stolen the girl's wallet. No one wants to go fish in the public beach. Robbers stole a few precious gems the other day. The police were alerted immediately, but they didn't know where to look for the thieves. Suddenly, they got an anonymous email. Check all the bottles in the cars leaving the town. Best regards, Mr. X. At the end of the day, the officers stopped a car loaded with boxes and bottled water. The bottle bottoms were all covered with paint, so they thought the gems should be in one of them. The level of water was the same in all the bottles, but when one of the officers placed one of them right next to the box, 
he instantly realized something was off. What was it? The bottle standing next to the box is much lower than those still inside. The police then found there was a double bottom and the gems were hidden right underneath it. Two friends, Martin and Clyde, had a bet. Martin said he would throw a ball and it would come back to him. He also said there would be no obstacle or wall the ball could ricochet from. Clyde said it was impossible and he lost. How's that? Martin threw the ball straight up. It obviously came back to him. No magic, just physics. Emily grabbed a really nice muffin at the cafeteria and put it on the office desk. She wanted to save it for later, but when she came back from the meeting, she saw someone had eaten her muffin. There were only three people who could do that, and only one person is telling the truth. Grace said it was Alicia. Alicia said she didn't eat anything. Tina says she didn't eat anything either. Who ate the muffin? It was Tina. Only one person is telling the truth, and it's Alicia. If Grace or Tina told the truth, then there would be two truthful people, but Emily knew only one person wasn't lying. Patrick really wanted to come to a private party, but the security would ask each person if they knew the secret access code. Patrick decided to overhear their conversations. When the person came up to the entrance, the security said 6, and the guest said 3. Then the security said 10 to the second visitor, and the reply was 3 as well. The third visitor also said three, but the security said two. Patrick thought he was ready to join the best party in town. When he came up to the entrance, the guard said seven, and Patrick replied three. The security didn't let him in. What should Patrick have said to get into that fancy party? He should have said five. The guest needed to count letters, six, 10 and 2 have 3 letters. That's why the answer was 3. In the word 7, there are 5 letters. Ben loved diamonds. For some time, he would spend $5,000 a day on precious stones. At some point, he realized he had too many gems, so he started selling them at $3,000 a piece. Sometime later, he became a millionaire. How is that possible if he was obviously losing money? Before his gem rush, Ben used to be a billionaire. Since he started losing money, he became only a millionaire. A vampire moved to a big city where nobody knew him to start a brand new life. Still, he just couldn't help it and started biting locals every single night. People got scared and invited a private investigator to solve the problem. A couple of days later, Detective Reitman had three suspects. He decided to visit each of them to find out who the vampire was. After visiting all the houses, he was sure he found the vampire. Who was it? Well, the man on the left has loads of garlic in the kitchen, and vampires are scared of it. The second suspect had a lot of silver-plated accessories, earrings, piercings, and a chain. Vampires don't really like silver. The guy in the blue shirt is a vampire. Long ago, in the kingdom of riddles, a criminal was caught. The guards took him to the king, who was famous for loving riddles. King Archibald said that if Harry, the criminal, managed to solve his riddle, he would set him free. Harry agreed and Archibald drew a two-foot line on the ground with his foot. The king asked Harry to make this line two times shorter without touching it. In the end, Harry was free. What did he do? Harry drew a four-foot line with his foot so that the one the king drew got two times shorter. Karen took part in a TV quiz where she could win one pound of pure gold. This quiz wasn't like ordinary ones. At the end of the show, the host brought her three large jars. Each of them has one pound of pure gold inside, plus some unpleasant surprise. The first jar has venomous snakes inside, the second one is full of acid, and the third one is filled with boiling hot water. Karen can only use her hands to get the gold out of the jars. She has 30 minutes to think. Which one should she choose?
Karen should choose the one with hot water. It cools down pretty fast, and it's gonna get lukewarm in half an hour. Guess who's rich now? Phantoms! Another fantastic creatures! <laughs> eh, you're not impressed. All your life you've been running a myth-busting blog. It's gotten pretty popular recently. Abandoned hospitals, creepy hotel rooms, haunted apartments, cursed houses. You spend a night in all of them and take a bunch of videos to prove that all those scary stories are nothing more than fairy tales. One day, one of your fans sends you a tip about a sinister dark castle located on a rocky cliff near the coast of a raging ocean. She says this place is the scariest in the world, but you're not intimidated easily. You grab your phone and head on over. Get ready to test your courage and resourcefulness. Count how many answers you get right and find out what your score means at the end of the video. Since it's your first night, you decide to spend it in a small village. It's right by the scary castle. Usually, people can't wait to tell you how freaky this or that place is. But in this village, everyone keeps silent. You ask one of the residents to tell you something about the castle, but she responds with nothing. Did she not want to speak to you? No, that's not it. She's afraid of answering. How do you know that? I'll give you six seconds to figure it out. Look at her hand. It says, run away, on her forearm. To reach the castle, you first need to walk through a small forest. At the edge of it, you see three roads and three signs. The first sign shows a wolf, the second, a bear, and the third, a vampire. Which road should you choose? Uh -oh. You have five seconds. Quick, make a decision. You don't believe in vampires, remember? But bears and wolves, eh, those are real. Besides, it's morning, and if vampires were real, they'd be steering clear of the sunlight. You make your way through the dense thickets of the forest and record what's happening on your phone. You notice a hut. Yeah, I bet a vampire lives here, you laugh to yourself. Ha <laughs> ha! Still, you decide to check it out. Your readers love that kind of stuff. You go into the dark hut and turn on the light on your phone. Cobwebs cover everything. The curtains are drawn. Some candles are out on the table. Ooh, a key. You grab it and put it inside your pocket. Before leaving, you notice a large wooden box in the corner and hear snoring coming from inside. You're scared out of your mind right now. And just then, the snoring stops. A vampire climbs out of the box. Oh, this is bad. Maybe you can get away before it realizes what's going on. You try to get outside, but the door's locked. Oh, the key. Yes. No, it doesn't work. What should you do? Quick, you don't have much time. just open the curtains. If it really is a vampire, it should be afraid of the sunlight. It worked! The vampire jumps back into the box to escape the light, and you make a break for it through the window. Finally, you reach the edge of the forest and get your first glimpse of the castle. In front of you is a large gate. You push on it. It swings open. As soon as you're in the courtyard, you realize you are not alone. Five other people are there. They're just standing around. No one's talking to each other. You want to know if they've heard anything about the owner of that creepy hut in the woods, so you walk a little closer. But you get a strange feeling deep in your stomach. Something's wrong with these people. You can't believe your eyes, but it looks like some of them are actual zombies. How many zombies are there? You have 10 seconds. Look closely. There are two of them. That guy over there doesn't have an ordinary arm. It's all bones, like a skeleton. And that woman in sunglasses, she's holding someone's eyes in her hand. Are those her eyes? You approach a guy who seems almost normal, but he doesn't look at you. He just keeps staring at the sky. Uh, it's a little scary. Okay, time to venture into the castle. As soon as you open the door, you hear music. It's a waltz, and it's coming from the main hall. Several couples are dancing around in 18th century costumes. Yikes. You decide to try and blend in by hitting the dance floor yourself. Well, after a few seconds, you look around and your face turns pale. These people are phantoms. How'd you figure it out? 
Look carefully at the details. You have five seconds. Look down. None of the dancers are touching the floor. They're just floating along. You run out of the hall, climb the wide stairs, and run into a random room. You lock the door and breathe heavily. <gasps> oh, you're starting to have serious doubts about all this mystical stuff. Maybe it does exist. But how is that even possible? A ray of sunlight suddenly shines on a luxurious bed with beautiful linen. Then it hits you. You're tired. Oh, you'll just lie down on the edge of the bed, and a 10-minute nap will really help get your head on straight. As soon as you close your eyes, though, you hear a rustling in the sheets right next to you. Then you feel a cold hand on your neck. You keep your eyes sealed shut. You're way too afraid to open them. But you pinch yourself to make sure you're not dreaming. The fingers on your neck start squeezing ever so slightly. Oh, that's it. You bolt out of bed. As fast as you can, you whip out your phone and try to record the uh, whatever it was. But there's nothing. Only an empty bed. Were you sleeping or was it real? You notice something. Oh, it's just a bad dream after all. What did you notice? I'll give you six seconds. The sun was shining when you laid down. Now, it's the full moon that's shining. You were out cold for a while. You leave the bedroom and walk down a long hallway lit by torches and candles. The silence is broken only by the churning of your stomach. Eh, guess you're hungry. Well, there's a heavy wooden door in front of you, and it's open just a crack. The pleasant smell of food starts wafting its way into the hallway. You go in and find a huge table, decked out with real silverware and porcelain. Oh, the food looks delicious. There's caviar, lobster, fruits, vegetables, different meats, plenty of desserts. Several people are sitting around the table, and as you approach them, they turn around to look at you. They're all uh -oh. vampires! How did you know? I'll give you five seconds to figure it out. The food on the table is untouched. The vampires have been waiting for their most important dish. You! You run. You make it back out into the hallway, then dart down a dark corridor. The vampires are chasing you. They're screaming! You find three doors at the end of the corridor. The first one has a fire symbol on it. The second has a snake symbol. And the third just says, exit. You try to open it, but it's locked. The vampires are closing in. What are you going to do? You have four seconds before you become vampire food. Try the key you found in the vampire's hut. Great! It fits! You run out into the courtyard and lock the door behind you. The moon is hidden behind some thick white clouds. You sneak through the courtyard and open the back gate of the castle. Next to the gate is a sign with an image of a werewolf on it. You walk off as quietly as possible. After about five minutes, you see a long bridge. There's a beautiful woman standing at the other end. She waves to you and motions for you to come closer. But something's bothering you. Could she be a werewolf? So, you can either cross the bridge or head back to the castle. What can you do to find out if she really is a werewolf? You have 10 seconds for this one. Good luck. Wait until the moon appears from behind the clouds. Your intuition was right. As soon as the moonlight falls on the woman, she begins to turn into a werewolf. Uh -oh. eh, still kind of cute, though. You run back into the castle grounds and close the gate behind you. Okay, reality check. You're in the courtyard. Vampires are inside the castle. A werewolf is waiting outside, and zombies are approaching. You're trapped. Why did you even come to such a scary castle? You pull out your phone and start recording a farewell video. You thank your followers for their views and comments. Thanks for subscribing. You admit that mystical creatures do exist and promise that you'll never set foot in a place like this ever again if you survive. The zombies are closing in and the werewolf is breaking down the gate. Oh, awesome. Your fear is gone and you realize that this whole thing is staged. It's all a show. How'd you figure it out? Watch the farewell video again and find the proof that everything is fake. I'll give you 10 seconds to spot the clues.
do you see that big guy with a camera behind you in the tower window? The zombies stop growling. They scream, surprise! They're not zombies. They're just wearing a whole ton of makeup. The gate opens and the woman takes off her werewolf costume and smiles. The vampires come out of the castle, carrying their fake fangs. This whole thing was set up by your fans. They wanted to scare you, and it worked. You're angry at them, but so happy that you're still alive. Okay, let's see how many you got right. One to three points. Eh, It'll be difficult for you to act in stressful situations. Watch more riddles and train yourself to be calm and focused. Four to six points. Something really bad has to happen for you to lose control. Phantoms don't seem to scare you at all that much. Seven to ten points. You don't even know what fear is, but you do know how to come out victorious in any situation. You have one question for your fans. How did they create that floating effect for those dancers? That was awesome. Your fans look at each other. What? What are you talking about? What do you mean? There were no dancers. A slight chill runs down your back. A notorious bank robber came to the city and huge sums of money started to disappear from the vaults of the city's banks. No one could stop the criminal. They were never caught on CCTV cameras. Bank security officers never saw anything suspicious. There was only one strange thing about the thief. They always left behind a slip of paper with a tooth, spider, and a lizard drawn on it. Was it some code? But several months later, the police managed to arrest three suspects. They were Mr. Pantafent, Ms. Tuspard, and Mr. Superhero. Yep, some people do have bizarre last names. Who is the infamous bank robber? It was Miss Tuspard. The pictures she kept leaving behind were her hint. Tooth, spider, lizard. Brandon's wife, Brenda, went to visit her friend who lived in another town. They agreed she would call her husband when she arrived there. But instead of calling, she sent him a message. Hey, everything is fine. I'll just go downstairs to buy coffee. I'll be brief now. More details in the next message. Love ya. Once Brandon read this message, he jumped into his sports car and rushed to the town where his wife had gone. Why? Brenda isn't simply terrible at spelling. The typing errors make up the word save. Someone stole extremely important documents from Mr. Larson's office. One week later, the police arrested the criminal. It was a woman called Emily. She was being questioned for three days straight, but still refused to tell the police where the folder with the documents was. Then, several officers visited her apartment. At first sight, nothing was out of the ordinary. But after careful inspection, they figured out where the documents were. Can you do the same? One floor tile seemed to be loose. Once the officers lifted it, they found the papers. When Victoria went to college, she started to live in a dormitory, sharing a room with another girl, Maria. Victoria's neighbor was very popular with guys. She had three admirers, Walter, Nathan, and Jeremy. But one day, Maria disappeared. Victoria was sure one of the guys was behind this. Maria loved drawing, and there were several pictures on her table. Victoria looked at them attentively and realized who she should ask about her friend. Jeremy must know something. Look at the pictures. A jacket, yo-yo, mouse, earth, rocket, and elephant. The first letters of these objects make up his name. Look at this poor guy. He seems to be stuck in the middle of a natural disaster. Which one should he choose to survive? A tornado, flood, or lightning strike? The only place where the guy might find some kind of shelter is a high hill behind his back. High ground during a lightning storm or a tornado is a terrible idea. 
which means the man will only be able to survive a flood. Carl was a rich man who had two adult sons, Ethan and Christian. They all lived in one house. One day, Carl saw that his most expensive ancient Chinese vase was missing. The only people who were at home the night before were his sons. The man didn't want to involve the police. That's why he decided to talk to each of his sons himself. He saw Ethan driving through the gates. He was back from his daily visit to the bakery. The guy said that the night before, he'd been practicing the guitar in his room. He didn't notice anything suspicious. Christian was near the swimming pool. He told his father, Now I understand. Yesterday I saw Ethan. He was putting some box in the back seat of his car. It must have been the vase. But Carl immediately realized it was Christian who had taken the vase. How did he figure it out? Ethan drives a sports car. It only has two seats. He couldn't have put the box in the back seat. It means Christian is lying. Jack and Deborah lived in a pretty small house near a forest. One day, the man went for a walk and never came back. Deborah called the police and they went to search for her husband. Soon they spotted him. He was lying on the ground, trapped under a large tree that had fallen on top of him. Suddenly, uh -oh. a stranger appeared from behind the trees. He exclaimed, How terrible! But it's not a surprise, really. The wind was so strong this morning, it must have knocked down this tree. The police officers immediately arrested the man. Why? The tree doesn't look broken by the wind. It looks as if someone cut it down. It was an unusually snowy winter. Detective Adam Davis was walking home from his office when he saw a young woman. She was carrying two large bags. For some reason, the girl seemed suspicious to the detective. He came up to her, showed her his badge, and asked what she had in her bags. Oh, I'm going on vacation. That's just some stuff I'll need there. And still, Adam called for backup and arrested her. Why? Look at the woman's footprints. She got out of the house through the window. A bizarre way to leave your own home. She must have broken into the house, and there are stolen things in her bags. A man was walking along a railroad track. Suddenly, he saw a train speeding toward him. But instead of getting away from the track immediately, the man started to run in the direction of the approaching train. When the train was very close, he finally jumped off the track. Why did he do this? When the man saw the train, he was on the bridge. He couldn't leave the track right away, and the nearer end of the bridge was closer to the oncoming train. Ryan worked as a cook's assistant in Mr. Miller's house. One day, the man's competitors promised Ryan to pay him a huge sum of money if he poisoned the rich businessman. Ryan waited until the cook took a day off. Then he made dinner for the whole family, Mr. Miller, his wife, and their two children. Each family member ordered a different dish. Ryan only poisoned the one the businessman was going to eat. You can save Mr. Miller if you guess which dish is his. Keep in mind that Donna, the man's wife, is a vegan. The businessman himself loves meat. Kira, the daughter, is on a diet, and Amy can't eat sugar. So, which dish did Ryan make for Mr. Miller? It's spaghetti with meat sauce. Congrats, you saved Mr. Miller. Four girls were driving to a party. At some point, the one who was behind the wheel failed to control the car and crashed into a tree. Luckily, everyone in the car was wearing seatbelts, so no one was hurt. But when the police arrived, none of the girls wanted to admit she was the one who was driving. The officers examined the car and looked around. And in no time, they knew which girl was lying. Can you figure it out?
Almost all the girls are wearing really high heels. It must be extremely uncomfortable and unsafe to drive wearing such shoes. And only the girl in the black dress has sneakers on. She was the driver. A math teacher told his students about Roman numerals. After that, he asked them to draw one line and turn nine into six. His only condition was that the students couldn't lift their pens from the paper until the line was finished. Mark was the first one to complete this task. How did he do it? He drew the letter S in front of IX and got six. Jeffrey was brought up by his grandfather, who was a billionaire. Unfortunately, the guy didn't seem to know the value of money. The elderly man worried about his grandson. He told Jeffrey he would stop giving him money until the guy got married. It meant that Jeffrey had to forget about his fun life. No more fast cars, parties, and clubs. Luckily, it didn't take the guy long to find a girlfriend. They met on a dating site. Amanda seemed to be everything Jeffrey had been dreaming about. Smart, pretty, funny, and rich. The guy was about to propose to her when something happened. One day, Amanda sent him a photo. In this photo, she was standing next to a luxurious car. The message she sent afterward read, How do you like my new toy? That's when Jeffrey realized Amanda had been lying to him all this time. How did he figure it out? The girl is wearing a badge in the photo. She must be working at a car dealership, not buying extravagant cars. There was a blackout in the city, but a bus driver still noticed a dog on the road. He managed to stop in time not to hit the animal. How come? This near miss happened during the day. They have no feathers, no scales, no body, and no bones. And yet, they have fingers and thumbs of their own. What are they? A pair of gloves. Hey, meet Callum, the world's best detective. You ready for a ride-along? Let's go! It was a rainy and gloomy day, and Detective Callum was having a snack in his office. Suddenly, a woman burst in and asked for help. She said she had hung her laundry outside to dry, then gone back in the house to watch some TV. When she went back out, her favorite dress was gone. She suspected her neighbor, Jane. She was always jealous of that dress. She even wanted Jane arrested. Detective Callum wasn't impressed. He said she had just made up the whole story. How did he know? It was a rainy day. Who'd be silly enough to hang their laundry up outside? There was a speedy thief in town who ran so fast that no one could catch her. After a lucky tip-off, the police saw a woman climb in through a store window. They surrounded the store. Inside were three women. Detective Callum was called in to interrogate them and identify the thief. When the detective arrived, he didn't even need to ask a single question. He knew exactly who the thief was. Which one was it? It was the third woman. These two are wearing heels. They wouldn't be able to run in those things. The third woman is wearing sneakers. A downtown bank was robbed. There were two criminals, but police could only catch one of them, Bill. Bill refused to say who his accomplice was, but the police had already rounded up three suspects, Harry, George, and Ben. They called up their trusty friend, Detective Callum. The detective only needed five seconds to crack the case. I'll give you seven. It's Ben. Look, he has the exact same tattoo as Bill. 
several women had gone missing recently, and even though it was a small town, police just couldn't catch a break. No clues for months. One day, Callum spotted the kidnapper going into a small abandoned shed. When he burst in, he found himself looking at three women. They all said they were locked in this small room and hadn't been out in months. But Callum knew one of them must be the kidnapper who was just pretending to be a victim. The first woman said her name was Genesis. She had been there about 8 months. The second woman, Tatum, said she had been there about 6. The third woman, Chloe, said she'd only been locked up for about 2 months. The detective knew exactly who the kidnapper was. Do you? It's Tatum. Look at her nails. She has a fresh manicure. Six months? Yeah, right. The owner of an ice cream parlor filed a theft report. Someone stole all the money from the register. He was only gone for like two minutes. Detective Callum showed up 20 minutes later. There were three people inside. Ainsley said she had been talking on the phone with her friend. She hadn't seen anything. Red said he just arrived a couple of minutes ago. Joshua said he wasn't really paying attention. He didn't notice anything. So, can you figure out who's lying? Who stole the money? Rhett said he had just arrived. But his ice cream's already melted. Liar. Phoenix wanted to get her dad the best birthday present ever. But she didn't know what he wanted. She decided to break into his laptop to see what he had saved in his online shopping cart. One problem, the laptop required a password, and Phoenix didn't know it. Luckily, there was a note next to it. She sent a picture of it to her friend, Detective Callum. He solved it right away. Can you? The note doesn't make sense because it's upside down. Flip it over, and you'll see a sequence of numbers 88, 89, 90, 91. The numbers before it are 86 and 87. So the password is 8687. Detective Callum traveled to a small neighboring city where young women were being kidnapped every day. Four had already gone missing. They all lived on the same street. Their names were Ava, Bella, Celeste, and Daphne. There were only three women left on the street. Ava, Riley, and Georgia. Callum had to act fast. Who would be the next target? The women are getting kidnapped in alphabetical order. A, B, C, D. The next target will be Ava. Mr. Coleman's mansion was robbed while he was on vacation. He immediately called Detective Callum. Everyone who had been to the house got interrogated. Sydney, his sister, said she'd gone to the house a couple of times to find some papers on Mr. Coleman's desk. Samantha, the gardener, said she'd come every week to water the plants. Asher, the cleaner, said he'd come every Friday to clean the house. Callum found all three of their fingerprints on Mr. Coleman's desk. He now knew exactly who the robber was. Ooh. It was Samantha, the gardener. Sydney and Asher had a reason to touch the desk. But Samantha wasn't even supposed to be in Mr. Coleman's office. There aren't any plants in there. A rich woman was robbed on her private yacht during a ferocious storm. A witness said they saw Kai watching the woman right before she was robbed. Kai denied everything and said he was in his cabin at the time, writing a letter to his wife. Detective Callum asked to see the letter. Five seconds after Kai handed it to him, Detective Callum put him in handcuffs. Why? Kai said he wrote the letter during the storm. There's no way his writing could be this neat when the entire yacht was swaying around like crazy. Logan, a young businessman, was poisoned in his house. Detective Callum was on the scene. 
pretty soon he had three suspects. Logan's girlfriend, Michaela. She said she hadn't seen him that day because she was busy at work. Next, there was his business partner, Rob. Rob said they'd had an argument, and they both got pretty angry, but he hadn't poisoned Logan. The last suspect was Blair, the driver. She said she wouldn't know how to poison someone even if she wanted to. Who should Detective Callum arrest? Look, there's fresh lipstick on Logan's shirt. It matches Michaela's. But she said she hadn't seen him that day. Suspicious. Eloise found her friend Fleur poisoned in her room. She called Callum and told him she was walking past Fleur's house and noticed her light was on. She texted her, but Fleur didn't respond. She got really worried, so she broke a window, climbed in, and found her on the floor. But Detective Callum didn't believe her. He immediately arrested her for poisoning her friend. Why? Eloise said she broke a window to get in. If that was true, the broken glass should be inside the room, but it wasn't. Eloise had to cover her tracks, so she broke the glass later from the inside. A college student was robbed during a flag presentation. Detective Callum arrived to investigate the case and interrogated several suspects. Kennedy said that she was in the bathroom at the time. Gavin said he'd noticed that the Japanese flag was hanging upside down, so he'd gone over to fix it. Eleanor said that the student who was robbed was her best friend. She would never do that. Who's guilty? It's Gavin. He said that the Japanese flag was hanging upside down. But that flag looks the same either way. He's lying. Someone stole a diamond necklace at a private VIP party. The police followed the robber into a boutique store. There were three customers, and they didn't know who the robber was. So they called Detective Callum. Adele said she'd never even been to a VIP party. Those things are for wealthy and famous people. Joseph said he'd never even heard about the party. Florence said she'd been in the shop for the last half hour, trying to find that perfect accessory. Who should Detective Callum arrest? Adele. She's wearing a gold bracelet and earrings. Seems like she was just at a pretty fancy event. Maybe a VIP party? Detective Callum got word that some outer space species had landed on Earth. He had a special mission to spot the aliens and report the information. He walked into a cafe. Aha! I spotted one. Who did he suspect? It's that dark-haired guy. He has six fingers. Mr. Brown, a wealthy businessman, was robbed last night. Detective Callum arrived as soon as he could and questioned three of Mr. Brown's neighbors. Mrs. Jonas said she got back late last night and went straight to bed. Mr. Polson said he'd always wanted to see the ocean, so he went on vacation to Bolivia. He just got back about an hour ago. Mr. Tanner said he'd spent the whole day working in the garden and went to sleep around 8 p.m. Who did Detective Callum arrest? Mr. Paulson. He said he went to Bolivia to see the ocean. But Bolivia isn't next to an ocean. Richard ran into his boss's office. Finn had just hit him in the bathroom for not helping him with his weekly sales presentation. But Finn denied it all. The boss called his golf partner, Detective Callum. He arrived, looked at Richard and Finn, and somehow knew that Richard had lied. How did he know? Richard's bruise is on the right side of his face. Finn is eating a sandwich and holding it in his right hand. He's right-handed. 
If Finn had really hit Richard, the bruise would be on the left side of his face.